Hello students. Welcome to the second part of 3D printing technology. In the last part, I have discussed with you about the FDM and stereo lithography. And today in this part, I will discuss about you the SLS, DMLS and polyjet printing. So, <clears throat> what is selective laser sintering or SLS? Basically, uh, selective laser sintering is an additive manufacturing process that belongs to the powder bed fusion family. In selective laser sintering, a laser selectively sinters the particles of a polymer powder, fusing them together and building a part layer by layer. The materials used in selective laser sintering are the thermoplastic polymers that come in a granular form. SLS 3D printing is used for both prototyping of functional polymer components and for small production runs as it offers a very high design freedom, high accuracy and produces part with good and consistent mechanical properties unlike FDM or stereolithography. The capabilities of the technologies can be used to its fullest though only when the designer takes into consideration its key benefits and limitation. So now see how a selective laser sintering 3D printer works. So you can see in this video how a selective laser sintering uh, 3D printer works. So basically at first the powder bin and the build area are first heated just below the melting temperature of the polymer and a recoating blade spreads a thin layer of powder over the build platform. Then a CO2 laser scans the contour of the next layer and selectively sinters that means fuses together the particles of the polymer powder. The entire cross section of the component is scanned so the part is built solid. When the layer is complete, the build platform moves downwards and the blade records the surface and the process then repeats until the whole part is complete. After printing, the parts are fully encapsulated in the unsintered powder and the powder bin has to cool down before the parts can be unpacked. This can take a considerable amount of time, sometimes it takes up to 12 hours. The parts are then cleaned with compressed air or other blasting media and are ready to use for further post process. The remaining unsintered powder is collected and can be reused in the next production uh, line. So here in the video you can see how a selective laser sintering process takes place and when the printing operation is complete the part is collected and then how it is shows how the post processing is taking place then comes to direct metal laser sintering or dmls basically selective laser melting that is a slm and DMLS are two metal additive manufacturing process that belongs to the powder bed fusion 3D printing family. These two technologies have lot of similarities. Both uses a laser to scan and selectively fuse or melt the metal powder particles bonding them together and building part layer by layer. Also, the materials used in both process are metals that come in granular form. So, let's see how a DMLS printer works. At first, the build chamber is filled with inert gas, for example argon, to minimize the oxidation of the metal powder and then it is heated to the optimal build temperature. Then a thin layer of metal powder is sprayed over the build platform and a high power laser scans the cross section of the component 
melting or fusing the metal particles together and creating the next layer the entire area of the model is scanned so the part is built fully solid when the scanning process is complete the build platform moves downwards by one layer thickness and the recorder spreads another thin layer of metal powder the process is repeated until the whole part is complete when the build process is finished the parts are fully encapsulated in the metal powder unlike polymer powder bed fusion process such as selective laser sintering the parts are attached to the build platform through support structures support in metal 3d printing is built using the same material as the part and is always required to mitigate the warping and distortion that may occur due to high processing temperatures so in this video you can see how a laser beam scans and it uses the powder to build a layer by layer uh, process and then uh, the post processing has been taken place to remove the uh, support structure and to get the finished product and when the bean cools to room temperature the excess powder is manually removed and the parts are typically heat treated while still attached to the build platform to relieve any residual stresses then the components are detached from the build plate via cutting machining or and are ready for use for further post processing so basically these are the uh, materials that can be used in dmls 3d printing that is aluminium alloys stainless steel titanium alloys cobalt chrome super alloy nickel super alloy okay and the last is polyjet or multijet or it can be sometimes termed as 3d inkjet printing basically material jetting or polyjet printing is an additive manufacturing process that operates in a similar fashion to, to 2d printers in material jetting a printhead that is similar to the printheads used for standard inkjet printing dispenses drops of a photosensitive material that solidifies under uv light building a part layer by layer the materials used in uh, polyjet or multijet printing are thermoset photopolymers that come in a liquid form material jetting 3d printed creates parts of high dimensional accuracy with a very smooth surface finish multimaterial printing and a wide range of materials such as abs rubber and fully transparent materials are available in material or polyjet printing these characteristics make uh, multijet a very attractive option for both visual prototypes and tooling manufacturing so now let's see how a um, material jetting or a material or a polyjet printer works so in the video you can see how a material jetting or polyjet printer works so firstly the liquid resin is heated up to 30 to 60 degrees centigrade to achieve optimal viscosity for printing then the printer travels over the bill platform and hundreds of tiny droplets of photopolymer are jetted or deposited to the desired locations a UV light source that is attached to the printhead cures the deposited material, solidifying it and creating the first layer of the part. After the layer is complete, the build platform moves downwards by one layer height and the process repeats until the whole part is complete. So you can see in this video how uh, in multi-jet or polyjet printing, we can uh, print multi-material or multi-colored printing that are ready to use after printing. So, uh, there are various char characteristics of polyjet printing that is the printer parameters, that is the multi-material and full color printing and that you can see in the uh, picture 
and uh, there is a need of support structure for polyjet printing then uh, the finished product may be matte or may be glossy that depending upon the production process that you used and uh, these are the various materials that are used in multi-jet or polyjet printing that's the standard type of the flexible type uh, simulated polypropylene type abs castable high temperature transparent and these are the various characteristics of that material so now the point comes that if we want to 3d print something which process we need to choose so that solely depends upon the application of the printed parts that we want to print and the material that are available with us so depending upon the availability of material and the applications of use uh, this is a chart you, you can see that in which type of application we can use which type of 3d printing technologies so i hope you have understood the total 3d printing process and in the next upcoming video i will discuss with you about how a 3d cad model can be converted into stl file and that stl file how it can be converted into a g code file with the help of uh, slicing software and how the parameters are there in the slicing software that depends on the quality of the 3d printing so for that thank you for watching the video hope you have learned a lot thank you